Do you know the word indolent? Have you ever heard of the indolence of the Filipinos? It's a phrase that has been used to describe the supposed laziness and lack of productivity of the Filipino people. But is there any truth to this stereotype? In 1890, a prominent Filipino writer and revolutionary named Jose Rizal wrote an essay titled The Indolence of the Filipinos, in which he challenged this notion and offered a different perspective on the historical, social, and economic factors that have shaped the Filipino character. Today, we'll take a closer look at Rizal's essay and explore its relevance to our understanding of Filipino culture and identity. La Indolencia de los Filipinos, more popularly known in its English version, The Indolence of the Filipinos, is an exploratory essay written by Philippine national hero Dr. Jose Rizal to explain the alleged idleness of his people during the Spanish colonization. It is a five-part social-political essay published in La Solidaridad in Madrid in 1890. This essay is a response to allegations made by some Europeans that Filipinos were lazy and indolent and that this was the reason for their supposed lack of progress and development. In his essay, Rizal argues that the Filipinos were not inherently lazy, but rather that they had been made so by centuries of colonization and oppression. He provides historical evidence to show that before the arrival of the Spanish, the Filipinos were a hard-working and enterprising people engaged in agriculture, trade, and various industries. However, under Spanish rule, they were subjected to various forms of exploitation and abuse, which led to a decline in their economic and social conditions. Rizal's essay was significant in the history of the Philippine Revolution because it challenged the dominant narrative of the Spanish colonizers and gave voice to the grievances of the Filipino people. In the first page of the chapter 1 in the said essay, Dr. Zenciano, a Filipino lawyer and an early advocate of economic reforms in the Philippines, under Spanish rule, stated that the indolence of the Filipino doesn't exist because the Spaniards are the ones who are indolent at the time, which made the Filipino blind to the truth. Rizal acknowledges the prior work of Gregorio Sanciano. However, Rizal admits that indolence does exist among the Filipinos, but it cannot be attributed to the troubles and backwardness of the country. Rather, it is the effect of the backwardness and troubles experienced by the country. According to Rizal, the real reason why Filipinos became indolent is because of the tropical climate, which is not very comfortable for the Filipinos to work hard since the Spaniards are making the Filipinos work during morning. Rizal also stated that the Spaniards are more indolent than the Filipinos. They detest manual labor and they are surrounded by servants who not only take off their shoes for them but even to fan them, Rizal said. In part 2 of La Indolencia de los Filipinos, Rizal delves deeper into the root causes of the perceived indolence among Filipinos. Through an examination of historical accounts and contemporary observations, he challenges the prevailing notion that the supposed laziness of the Filipinos is inherent. When in consequence of a long chronic illness, the condition of the patient is examined, the question may arise whether the weakening of the fibers and the debility of the organs are the cause of the maladies continuing or the effect of the bad treatment that prolongs its action. The tenic physician attributes the entire failure of his skill to the poor constitution of the patient, to the climate, to the surroundings, and so on. In this passage, Rizal uses the metaphor of a sick patient to illustrate the problems and failures of the Spanish colonial government in the Philippines. He suggests that the government is similar to an attending physician that often blames the poor constitution of the patient, which is the Philippines, and other external factors for the country's problem rather than examining their own role in worsening these problems. Rizal cited Pigafetta's journal and a Chinese manuscript to show that early Filipinos were not lazy or indolent. According to Pigafetta, the native Filipinos were skilled in navigation and commerce and worked hard in cultivating their fields to engage in trade. Similarly, 
the Chinese manuscript described how the natives were industrious and had an economic system. He also cited works from the works of Antonio de Morga, Pedro Cerino, Juan de la Concepcion, and Gaspar de San Agustin, among others, and also mentioned modern travelers who had visited the Philippines before the Spanish colonization. Rizal argues that these historical accounts contradicted the claims that Filipinos are inherently lazy or indolent, and this predisposition was the result of external factors. In the third chapter of the after-mentioned essay, Rizal lists various factors that may have contributed to the Filipino's culture and economical descendants. There were, for instance, conflicts between Spaniards, natives, and Moros, pirate invasions which led to decrease in the population of native Filipinos, and forced labor. The decline of labor in the Philippines has been caused by a combination of circumstances some independent of the will of men, others the offspring of stupidity and ignorance, others the corollaries of false principles, and still others the result of more or less base passions. This has led to wars, internal disorders, insurrections, and executions. There are undoubtedly underlying factors behind the alleged laziness of Filipinos since at that time, the Filipinos were vulnerable and the Spaniards took advantage of that. The line clearly expressed that the communities during the Spanish colonization were in chaos as a result of the many wars, uprisings, and invasions. There has been a great deal of turmoil and devastation. Numerous Filipinos also have been sent abroad to serve in expeditions or fight in wars for Spain. As a result, the population has shrunk. Many men have been taken to shipyard to build ships due to forced labor. Meanwhile, locals who had enough of the mistreatment fled to the mountains, so the farms have been neglected as a result. Have forgotten much about farming, raising poultry, stock and cotton, and weaving cloth as they used to do in their paganism and for a long time after the country had been conquered. Moreover, the phrase implies that the Filipinos' loss of traditional skills and knowledge was caused by the Spanish colonial system. The phrase also suggests that the Filipinos may have become demoralized and disillusioned with their traditional way of life as a result of colonization. In short, it emphasizes the negative impact of colonialism on the cultural identity and development of the Philippines where the imposition of colonizers' values and practices led to the erosion of traditional knowledge and skills, resulting in a sense of indolence among the population. In the fourth part of the essay, delves to the death of trade in the Philippines. So, how did this constitute the motive of the Filipinos' alleged indolence? Filipinos, according to Rizal, are not accountable for their misfortunes, since they are not their own masters. The Spanish government has not supported labor or trade, which has ended when the government has viewed the country's surrounding trading partners with extreme distrust. Furthermore, trade has dropped due to pirate assaults and the severe limitations imposed by the government, which provides little help to crops or farmers. This, combined with encomendero abuse, has prompted many to flee the fields. Many government officials own businesses, red tape, and bribes are widespread. And the government tolerates rampant gambling. The situation is made worse by the church's incorrect doctrine, which upholds that wealthy people will not get to heaven, resulting in a negative attitude toward work. There has also been discrimination in education against natives. In the final part of the essay as stated by Rizal, the causes of Filipino indolence can be reduced and contained into two factors. The first of these include the limited form of educating and training Filipino natives, and the next factor is the absence of unity among Filipinos as filial countrymen. So, how do these factors affect the indolence of the Filipinos? The first factor expresses the sad truth that the separation from Spaniards and other high-class men of society led the Filipinos not having similar experiences for the latter and were brainwashed to become inferior. The next factor is, due to their inferior thoughts of the Filipinos, they tend to regard foreign culture as a model and then emulate it. 
The people of the Philippines were treated as individuals without the right of association, resulting in weakness and passivity. This lack of cohesion and voice has allowed oppressive measures to be imposed without protest, leading to further suffering and decay. Among all these, Rizal thus proposes liberty and education, finally to solve such a dilemma. Through reform is only possible with education and liberty, which are the foundation for progress and prosperity. Man cannot work without resting, and if in doing so he is considered lazy, then we could say that all men are in them. One cannot blame a country that was deprived of its dignity to have lost its will to continue building its foundation upon the backs of its people, especially when the fruits of their labor do not so much as reach their lips. Filipinos are not fools and are not puppets who simply do as commanded. Filipinos are human beings who are motivated by will towards the accomplishment of their objectives and who strive for the preservation of their race. When this fundamental aspect of their existence is denied to them, who can blame them if they turn idle?